Let's get to the logistics, though. Let's get to the logistics. We know that black women are earning college degrees faster than anybody else. Many of us uh, are doing like, like, like we're doing, Ayala. We're getting those terminal degrees, those JDs, MD, PhDs. We also are the fastest growing group of entrepreneurs, uh, along with Latina women in America. Pew Research said that women are now out earning men out earning men yes. in 22 yes. of the largest cities in America, including where I live, New York, D.C., L.A., you name it. When we talk, and I know that you've said that you cannot teach a man or tell a man how to be a man, so I will not ask you to indict men in this question. But I do want you to speak, Ayanla, to how women need to, uh, I don't know, position ourselves so that we can be in our divinity, so we can have our crowns right, how we can create and not build, when some of us, quite frankly, feel that the men that are available to us, and I'm talking about across the color spectrum, across the age spectrum, trust me, I've done them all, um, they are not positioned to protect nor provide because of some of the statistics we just talked about. They're not earning the incomes, they're not having the resources, and some of them are not even showing up in the leadership. Would you date a bus driver? You. Would you date if a bus If he owns driver? the bus. If he owns no. it. If he owns the bus. See, that's a problem. It. That's a problem. That's a problem. Okay. Because the standards and requisites, and I'm not talking about him laying on his sofa playing video games all day. <laughs> I'm not talking about mm -hmm. that. But the standards and the criteria that we use to measure men is off for who mm. we are as women and who they are in this society. I would date a bus driver mm. if he was, if he loved driving the bus, if he was a man of integrity, if he was good to his mama, if he treated me well, I would date a bus driver. But we think that it's another human being's responsibility to give us what we need instead of us building together. I can build with a bus driver. Mm. I'd have my little stash over on the side in my prenup, but I could build with a bus driver. Mm. <laughs> so I think some of the criteria that we look for in the reality of today keeps us unhappy, keeps us angry, mm. keeps us in balance. And then when the men show up, we want to beat them up because they're not living up to our standards and criteria. And and it's not working, beloved. It's just not working. So it's not that it's bad or wrong. It's obsolete. Mm -hmm. It's obsolete. Mm. We have to come up with a new way of being. I don't believe in carrying a man. A man has to do for himself. My son got his first job when he was nine. Nine. OK, because you're a black man, you will know how to take care of yourself. But I think the way we measure it, it's, it's just obsolete. Hello, ladies. Welcome back to my channel. So you just watched a you know, clip of an interview that Ayanla Bonzant, if I'm saying her name correctly, did not too long ago um, with this black woman who's an interviewer from what I've known about her. I think she is an attorney or she's just a very high earning black woman. So in that conversation, um, Ayanla basically asked her if she would date a bus driver and her response, as it should be, is if she if he owns the bus. <laughs> So Ayanla, you know, goes on to say that's a problem. So I wanted to talk about this because this is not okay. We've got to stop telling high earning black women that they need to deal with men who economically are at a deficit compared to them just because they have a moral higher ground, right? And statistically, if we really want to be, um, you know, real about this men who have a low income jobs commit the most domestic violence they uh, cheat more uh you know there's a lot of problems in the home with men who don't earn a lot of money or uh you know men who uh, don't have very good careers so you know there's nothing wrong with being a bus driver a pizza driver a construction worker or what have you but to expect that that type of man should get is or is entitled to this amazing happy family is you know it's, it's it's a little bit delusional because men in those types of careers can't even afford that 
they cannot afford the white picket fence lifestyle anyway. At best, they can afford to live with a roommate, but they can't afford wives and children, having a wife and having children. And historically speaking, men that did not have any resources, didn't have resources set up or in line to uh, present to a woman's father and to have children, they did not get married, okay? They did not have their legacy and their lineage continued on historically. Back in the in those days, a man had to approach your father with something to offer for your hand in marriage. And if he didn't have that, he didn't get a wife. He didn't get married. So the expectation today that women who are, you know, high earning women who have their stuff together, who put in the work to build themselves up into these amazing trailblazing women now only get the bus driver. (laughs) That's insanity, especially for black women. Economically speaking, the black community really can't afford to have marriages where someone's not making any real money unless it's a traditional relationship. But even aside from traditionalism, Black families, black wealth is going to excel faster and better if two people are both high earning. So if a woman has a high earning career that she actually enjoys, she doesn't plan to stay home and she marries a man who also has a high earning career. Those two people in a marriage is going to be most beneficial to the black family economically in the years to come because there will be an abundance of resources they can have children and they both have something to pass down to their children and it will build up the community with more relationships like that more relationships like the Barack and Michelle type of dynamic where both are very successful and educated and high earning on their own and they come together uh I, I you know I talk about on my channel that black women should strive to have traditional relationships but i also say that black women if that's what you want you're most beneficial um by dating outside of your race because there's just not a lot of black men available that can offer that to you and you know from the black men that can offer that do they want you so it's better to expand and open up your options to men where you don't need to have this conversation but if you are a high earning black woman and you don't really care to have a traditional relationship you enjoy what you do uh, whether you're your own boss or you have a job you do go into where you earn a lot of money but you like your environment you like the people you work with you like your office and what have you and you want to marry a black man it is it makes most sense to marry a black man on your level Therefore, you know, the resources are are there. They're in abundance because black men collectively don't have enough resources to take care of their wives and children. They just do not. So, you know, kudos to Ayanna for, you know, saying that she would date the good hearted bus driver. But in reality, especially according to data, good hearted men don't have low income jobs, okay? Men who have integrity, men who are disciplined and hardworking, these men tend to end up successful because those traits, uh, you know, and, and they're also smart, those traits get them into high places over time. They don't stay bus drivers and janitors with all these amazing skills. It just doesn't make sense. Men that end up in these types of job most likely probably didn't have a lot of discipline. They probably couldn't stick it out and finish college. Uh, you know, they're probably, you know, no shade, not very smart. They don't take the time to read and study things thoroughly to pass the test and to excel to higher positions. So they settle to be a janitor, to be a bus driver. All right, so we need to stop thinking and believing this delusion that low earning men have such amazing qualities. If they did, they would be much more successful. They'd have a better network that they could utilize to make more money, to attain more resources, to get in higher positions in life. If they were just that amazing, they would not be having like bare minimum low income jobs. The two don't go together. You can meet men who are low income, who are nice, who in general are pleasant to be around. But at the end of the day, they don't have what it takes to really go to the top. Hence why they're not at the top. All right. So ladies, don't believe these lies that low income men, men who have no real 
credentials are the ones you need to go for, especially if you have more credentials than him, if you're high earning, if you have all your ducks in a row, you do not need to date a man who is still on his way there, especially a grown man, 35 and up. That's embarrassing. And that shows a lot about who he is as a man. The fact that he's a middle aged and older and still so far behind. It's not a flex. It's not cute. Love does not start from pity. Okay, don't have pity on these guys and use that as the reason to why you date them. I don't even know why men like this who agree with this are on here promoting this. It's embarrassing. It's embarrassing to have to bring up your situation as a form of pity to get a woman to date you. That's embarrassing. And and all these other, you know, topics about there's not enough high value men, there's not enough providers. When I hear stuff like that, all I hear is I guess that just means more men need to work hard because a lot of women want providers. I don't hear oh women need to just settle for men who don't provide and settle to pay half of the bills and do the child be- uh, child rearing and the housework at the same time. That's not what I think when I hear those things. But in my personal opinion, overall, I do think there's enough providers because there are uh, there's really not even a lot of women that want to stay home. Keep in mind, majority of women in society today are uh, much more liberal. They don't want to stay home. They like earning their own money. They don't a growing number of women don't even want to have children. So if you're a woman who wants to have kids and you want to stay home, you're actually a minority and there are plenty of providers for you. So the men who want to pay 50-50, there's actually quite a few girls that will go along with that. But they're not going to be traditional wives. They're going to want to have a say in the house. They're going to want to make decisions. They're going to want you to help do the housework. And if you don't, then it's going to be a problem for her. Right? If you're a traditional woman, you will probably be the one, most likely be the one to do the housework unless you hire a maid. Or unless your man in general just doesn't mind helping out. Maybe he's just a guy who likes to clean as well. There's plenty of men like that. They like to clean their own stuff. But usually you would be the one in charge of the child rearing and the cleaning. However, you don't have to work. You don't have to worry about bills. And you do have access to resources as his wife. So it is a good trade off, I would say. Versus a 50-50 relationship where the woman is paying 50% and so is the man and she you know, she's going to have to get him to understand that he's going to have to take on some of those roles, some of those traditional woman roles as well, since they're 50 50. So, um, you know, I say all that to say that this lie, this narrative that men who have low income jobs will make suitable partners if you give them a chance, if you work with them, if you build with them, that is fantasy. Fantasy, fantasy, fantasy. Men who commit the most violence, they have low income jobs. Men who are the most uh, physically aggressive, they have low income jobs. Men who commit most domestic violence in the house, low income jobs. Okay. Men who are high earning, they have something to lose. So they're not going to be out here acting crazy, ready to slap you up, ready to even cheat on you. I know they say high value men have options and all that other stuff. But a lot of those high earning men, they're working long hours like they're working hard. Okay, they don't have time. A lot of them don't have the time to be laid up with other chicks, depending on their industry. Now, rappers, ball players, <laughs> those types of men get paid a lot of money and they don't really, you know, it doesn't seem they're really that busy because they get to plan their own schedule for as I know for rappers, they get to schedule when they're in the studio, when they're doing shows and for ball players, they have a, an entire season. And then once that season is over, they have a lot more free time. But I'm talking about guys that are um, in the corporate world, like professional men that have to be in their office, that have to meet with people, that have deals to do, um, that actually have to sit down and think about what they're doing instead of being a part of a team that tells them what to do or, you know, part of a label that lays out their schedule for them or whatever. These high earning guys create all of that themselves. And so they don't have time to be wasting their money um, 
and any more of their time on a a bunch of random girls. (laughs) Like, that's not the reality for real, true, professional married men. Um, they have reputations to uphold and they're, they're not trying to conduct business knowing that everyone, everyone knows that they're a cheater and that they're a liar on their own wife in their own household of all places. And remember ladies, I did post another video, a short video a while back where there was a man who said that if he is in business with another man and he sees that man is or knows that man is cheating on his wife. He will not do business with him because if you can't stay loyal to your own wife, you will not stay loyal to me in a business deal. So high earning men are not going to be the ones out here doing the most, being the most grimy, low income, low wage job having men are because they have nothing to lose. They're expendable. So they will just, (laughs) all that energy they could be putting on, uh, putting towards getting better. They're using that to cause havoc into their own life because they just don't want to compete in the global market, in the national market, in their local market for resources. So they're using all that extra energy to talk to a bunch of girls, to plan and decipher when they're going to cheat on their woman. That's what they do. So don't ever, ever, ever get caught up with a man who's not a provider if you know you want a provider do not get caught up with a man who's a provider and when you do meet a man you need to let him know i only date providers because i plan to be at home with my children with uh just be at home with my children supporting my man supporting myself supporting our kids i'm not going to work and so i need a man who understands that and he is overall a provider and can afford to be a provider you need to just lay it out asap (laughs) so you're not wasting anyone's time and you do need to um make him prove that to you that he is a provider he does need to show you that he can take care of you in some capacity before you commit him just saying he can provide or he will, or maybe you are seeing his lifestyle and you see that he is able to provide a lot for himself. That still doesn't mean anything either. All that means is he's able to provide for himself, (laughs) but you need a man who's going to prove to you he can provide to you. Actions, not just words. All right. So that's all I wanted to say for this video. Let me know your thoughts down below on uh, what Ionia had to say in this short clip. And I will talk to you ladies in the next one. Bye.